And now for one of the most influential modern poems of all time. The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot, his name is synonymous with modern American poetry and even world poetry, along with Ezra Pound. His poetic voice is highly ironic and highly elusive. What do I mean by elusive? It, uh, in terms of imagery, it borrows from and alludes to many works of the past, reinventing them, reappropriating them for his own poems. Not only specific poetic lines, but the style of certain poems. It's a combination of human sympathy and ironic wit, tonally. But he's not a romantic, even though he mockingly again borrows a lot from romantic conventions in his poems. The focus for him is on the text as a carefully made object, object, hence the theory of new criticism, of which he was a big name. He was highly influenced by Dante, John Donne, and the French symbolists, in other words, pretty classic stuff, but of course he would reappropriate it into something much more modern giving it that element not only of modern reinvention, but of metatextuality. And again, highly elusive, referring to other works within his own. And there are quite a few quotes from him. He didn't just do it, he thought an awfully lot about it and wrote about it outside of his own poetry in prose essays. These are all from Eliot's essay, Tradition and the Individual Talent, concerning elusiveness, or that heavily elusive style referring to other works. The existing order is complete before the new work arrives. For order to persist the supervention of novelty, the whole existing order must be, if ever so slightly, altered. And so the relations, proportions, values of each work of art toward the whole are readjusted, and this and this is conformity between the old and the new. So he actually, it lends a bit of credibility and, well, what's the word? Um, posterity to this highly experimental style because, well, according to him, in order for something to continue in its tradition, it must be retold and worked upon and recontributed to, which is what he saw in what he was doing through the illusions in his own modern works. So he wasn't dispensing with the past. According to his own rationale, he was reinforcing the past by making it new. The poet must be very conscious of the main current, which, is, which does not at all flow invariably through the most distinguished reputations. He must be quite aware of the obvious fact that art never improves, but that the material of art is never quite the same. In other words, again, continuity. Making something new is not something that is that dispenses with the old, according to Eliot. As you notice here, he's kind of having it both ways. Uh, lending credibility to modernity, but also maintaining the posterity of the past. What is to be insisted upon is that the poet must develop or procure the consciousness of the past, and that he should continue to develop this consciousness throughout his career. Therefore, one should not, as he's saying here, completely dispense with the old. It's very much like that saying, in order to break the rules, you must know the rules. Therefore, you should must be educated on well, older forms, as he certainly was. What happens is a continual surrender of himself as he is at the moment to something which is more valuable, that is, the continuing continuum of poetry, like it's one big continuous disciplinary animal throughout history. The progress of the artist is a continual self-sacrifice, a continual extinction of personality. So he saw it as something very selfless. 
and from tradition and the individual talent more on elusiveness, the poet, uh, but a little more truncated, the poet should act as a medium, like a catalyst for sort of this historical current of continuing poetry. And in order to maintain that continuum, he must make it new. The business of the poet is not to find new emotion, but to use the ordinary ones and in working them up into poetry to express feelings which are not in actual emotions at all. In other words, the completely new is something that you wring out of, well, the hackney, the cliched. So the tools are always the same, but the, de the new uh, development, the new artistic development is what is key. Poetry is not a turning loose of emotion, but an escape from emotion. So, again, he's certainly no romantic. He's not terribly into the romantic idea of freely letting loose one's emotion. In other words, uh, the Wordsworthian school of uh, romantic poetry. It is not the expression of personality, but an escape from personality. He saw writing poetry as something that was very technical, though it was still very much a gain to him. Again, it was all about the pure experiment. Now, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock in particular. Ezra Pound and, and T.S. Eliot are often cited as the two most important contributors to, to modern American poetry. Eliot especially demonstrates how sophisticated and multi-layered a metaphor can become in one of his best-known works, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. It is a poem about a lot of things, modernity and modern life. See if you can see this in this rather challenging poem. Romantic disillusionment, mock heroism, certainly making fun of himself, and self-loathing, poetry itself, there's the metatextual as uh, aspect. And all of this has made the title character, J. Alfred Prufrock, who is also the speaker of the poem, one who is often cited as a literary example of the prototypical modern man. J. Alfred Prufrock is the modern man. Okay. I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to seeing the responses uh, on the discussion board. Good luck.